friends, how are you doing today? Now, if you're new here, hi and welcome. Well, it's Friday, guys. I do hope you had a very fast week. I know I did. Please hit the like, subscribe, and that little bell if you enjoy all of our videos. We appreciate you so much, my friends, for just being here. Thank you. Well, we talked about Maura Murray on Wednesday. And when I was doing some search records for Maura, I did see another girl that came up missing in that same area. Now, do we have a serial killer? Or maybe could there be a connection? Let's find out. The case of Brianna Maitland. Brianna was born on October 8th, 1986. She had been raised on a farm in Franklin, Vermont. Her father is named Bruce and her mother is named Kelly. Brianna has an older brother also. At 17 years old, Brianna wanted to move out from her home where her parents lived. She had a close relationship with her parents, but moving away was not the issue of them. She wanted to be closer to her friends and she wanted to be more independent on herself. Brianna wanted to go to the same school her friends were attending. So Brianna had enrolled in that high school. It was about 15 minutes away. She did live in different homes. Also, she had lived in with two other boyfriend's houses also. To me, it looked like she was just testing the waters of living arrangements first to see what would be better for her before she actually committed and got settled in. In February 2004, she had dropped out of high school. She had moved in Sheldon, Vermont with a close friend named Julian Stout. Around the same time, Brianna was attacked at a party that was a former friend of hers named Kelly LaCrosse. Brianna had extensive training in martial arts, you see. She trained in jiu-jitsu. Brianna, when confronted with the fight that was from Keeley, Brianna did not fight back at all. Even though I think she could have, with all that training she had, she knew in martial arts, but she didn't. She had let Keeley hit her several times when Brianna was seated in a truck. Brianna had went to a local hospital to be treated for a broken nose. She had a concussion, two black eyes with cuts on her face. Later, she did file charges against Keeley, but they had been dropped after the disappearance of Brianna. Now, there were others that had saw the fight, and they said it was a love triangle that could have been the blame, that Keeley and Brianna were interested in the same young man. On March 19, 2004, Brianna had taken her GED test exam. Her father was in living in New York at this time, and her mother was living in an area close by, though. After she had finished the GED exam, she went to lunch with her mother to celebrate. Brianna was in good spirits and very happy from what her mother had said on that day. She said that Brianna had talked about going to college. After lunch, they spent the day together. Then they had done some errands and did some shopping. As they were shopping and waiting in line to purchase the items from the store, something outside had caught Brianna's eye. She was looking into the window, looking outside, and she saw something. She had left the store to find out what she saw and wanted to investigate in telling her mother that she will be right back. Her mother, Kelly, had finished purchasing the items, and as she left the store, she saw Brianna waiting at their car. Now, to her mother, Brianna was not like she was at the store. She was irritated, shaken, and a bit uneasy. Her mother had looked around but did not see anyone and did notice that Brianna did not have any bags from any other store that she might have went to. No one knows what really happened when Brianna had left the store that they were waiting in line. She did tell her mother as she got into the car that she needed to go home and get ready for work for that evening. So her mother, Kelly, had dropped her off at Brianna's home around 3.30 or 4 p.m. Not knowing that this would be the last time she'll ever see her daughter. Brianna had left a note for Jillian saying that she would come back to the house after she had finished up her work at the restaurant. Brianna had drove a 1985 Oldsmobile 88 Royale. The car was registered to her mother, Kelly. 
Now she had left to go to her job at the Black Lantern Inn. Brianna had went to work at the restaurant. She was working in the evening shift. She was a dishwasher there at the restaurant that was on Main Street in Montgomery, Vermont. Her co-workers had said they did not see her use the phone that night, nor did anyone come and see her. She just did her shift. Brianna had finished up, and at 11.20, some of her co-workers had asked if she wanted to join them for dinner. She had declined the invitation, and she told them that she had to go home to get rest because she had to go to work at her second job the next day. You see, her second job was at a diner in St. Albans, Vermont. Her friends and co-workers had noticed she left alone in her car as she drove away from the restaurant. Now, the following day, there was a call to the police about a car that looked like it was abandoned and was backed up into a house. And they noticed it was unlocked, but the keys were missing. Her car was found abandoned in the town of Richford and at a place called Old Dutchburn House. This was located about a mile from the restaurant that she worked at. The back of the car had went through the house as if it had been backed up there and lost control of the foot pedals and it had put into the wrong gear. The sliding of the house had fallen on the back of the car. It was not taken down or thrown on it. The investigator trooper that was looking into the car found a bottle of water and an unsmoked cigarette and also they found two paychecks that were Brianna's and they totaled about $150. Inside they found loose change on the outside of the car as well. The way her car looked it was apparent that the, her car did not run off the road, lost control, or even crashed there. It looked like someone had deliberately backed her car up into the house. The rear of the car was pushed up on the foundation of the house. The car's back wheels were lifted off the ground. The car was disabled and the trooper had figured that someone had been drinking or maybe had done this while intoxicated. Now the police did call a tow truck and they did have it towed to a local garage. Now. This time, no one had even noticed that Brianna was missing. Kelly, her mother, did not discover her car had been found abandoned. And Jillian did not realize that Brianna was missing because she found the note that Brianna had left and she just assumed that Brianna had found another place to sleep at. It was not till March 23rd, however, when her mother Kelly started calling people to find out where Brianna was at. Everyone that she spoke to did not know where she was and that had not seen or talked to Brianna at all. Fearing the worst, she had went down to the police station to file a missing persons report. While waiting, it was not until two days later that the Vermont police had showed up to Kelly's house and showed her a picture of a car that was found in Richford. Kelly recognized the car. It was the same one that Brianna was driving that she knows that her daughter would not leave it in that kind of condition. So the police started to investigate her disappearance and the first person that was on their radar was this very same person that attacked her, which was Keely. She had been cleared. Many witnesses have reported on seeing the car at the old Dutchburn house the night that Brianna had disappeared. There was one man that said he went by the Dutchburn house at 11.30 p.m. And then on March 19th, around 12.30 in the morning, on March 20th, he did not see anyone near or inside the car. He had said that the headlights might have been on, but he wasn't sure. Then there was another man that had went by the Dutchburn house on March 20th between midnight and 12.30. He said he noticed the turn signal was blinking on the car. The former boyfriend of Brianna's had drove by also the house between 2.30 a.m. and 4 a.m. on March 20th. He said he did not see anyone but did see the car. He did tell many stories and so that is why the time range is so extended from 2.30 to 4 a.m. Now, a few hours had passed and people started to drive by. Anne was taking pictures of the car back through the house. It did look out of place to them. 
At first, the police thought that Brianna had just run away and that they did search the old Dutchburn house and came up empty-handed. They found nothing. They did search the car and processed it and did not seem like there was any struggle to them. They did recover DNA from the car, however, but have not revealed the results of any kind of test. It does appear that they are trying to match the DNA to a suspect. There were a few items in the car that were Brianna's. Her eyeglasses, contact lens case, her medication for her migraine headaches, her driver's license, her makeup, her clothing, and an ATM card. The police at first thought that she was a runaway, like I said, but they did shortly change their minds of what they found and are thinking that there was foul play involved with her disappearance. There was a call that came in anonymously saying that Brianna was being held against her will in a house in Brookshire, Vermont. Now this house was being rented by two known drug dealers. Their names are Raymond Ryans and Nathaniel Jackson. On April 15, 2004, the police had raided the house. They did find lots of drugs and they had arrested both of the men, but they did not find no Brianna. It was a later revealed that Brianna had contacted the both men and recently as one week before she had disappeared. You see, Brianna had been dabbling in experimenting in crack cocaine and other drugs, like many teenagers do. Then another anonymous tip came in in late 2004 that Ryan and Jackson was involved in Brianna's disappearance and her murder. In the investigation of that tip, the police could not find any kind of evidence to support that claim. There were many tips that came in that ended up nowhere. Just a lot of dead ends. Then in July of 2016, the old Dutchburn house had caught fire and it was destroyed. Now remember the case of Maura Murray? She was missing only about a month before Brianna had disappeared. She had disappeared in New Hampshire and it's only about 90 miles away. The police do not think that these cases are any way connected. Well, this is it for this case, guys. Tell me your thoughts on what could have happened to Brianna. Now, my take on this, these cases could be connected to Marie Marie's. I'm not sure if they really are. It seems that if they're not connected, then Brianna had met the person or persons at the Dutchburn house. From her work, the timeline adds up from the time that she got there and from the witnesses that saw her car in that kind of condition. She might have been in some kind of heated argument and she had threw it, the car in reverse instead of into drive. Her not being a very experienced driver, she might have just drove right into the side of the house and the back rear of the car had been on top of the foundation and she could not escape. Then maybe someone had taken her to another location and might have killed her. I really don't think that she would really go and on to take her own life because she, she has so much to live for and so much to do. She even talked about going to college. Well, I'm off to another case. Thank you guys for being here and have a great rest of the weekend. Until Monday, you guys take care, make great choices. Bye, friends.